Hey everyone, it's Ryan here on the Syntax Byte, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the display inline block property to create a CSS grid that is responsive and expands and contracts just like the one you see on your screen right now. You can do this with images or any other content that you might want to do it with. We're going to use display inline block, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so I've got a blank file here, and we're just going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create a container and that is going to be a div I'm gonna give it a class of container so that I can have multiple containers if I want to and in here is where we are going to have all our blocks now in the previous example that you saw I was just using divs to create little blocks but you could use images or anything else that you want in this case I'm going to use divs and I'm going to give them all a class of grid item and then I'm going to give them different colors and we're going to apply some different colors so I'm going to make this one green and make sure you close your divs as well even though there's no content in them I'm just going to copy it and paste it a few times we'll make nine of them so that's six one two three that's nine and I'm just going to change some of these colors. So we're going to change this one to be red, this one to be blue. We'll make this one to be orange. We'll make this one to be red. We'll make this one to be purple. Perfect. So now if we go ahead and refresh the page, we see a very exciting look of nothing because there is no content in these divs. So what we want to do is we actually need to give them a background color and we need to give them a uh, width before they show up so I'm gonna take grid item we're gonna give it a width of 200 pixels and a height of 200 pixels and that's just so that our divs will have a width and a height regardless of the fact that they have no content in them currently okay so then I'm gonna make give green I'm gonna give that a color of dark green I'm going to take red, I'm going to give that a, or sorry, a background color, that is what I want, I want a background color, I'm going to give that one tomato, and sorry, we just have to fix this here, background color, perfect. What others do we have? We have blue and orange, is that correct? Blue, orange, and purple. So we're going to take dot blue, we're going to give it a call, background color of corn flower blue. And we're going to take dot purple. And we're going to give it a background color of violet. Do we have any others? We had orange. And I'm just going to say dot orange. We're going to give it a background color of orange. Okay, now that, that all that boilerplate is out of the way, we should see that we have a bunch of little colored blocks. But the problem is that they're all stacked on top of each other and it's not responsive in any way whatsoever. Okay, how do we fix that? So what we want to do is we just want to say uh, display inline block. And what inline block does, let's let's take a minute here. So that, that gets them all displaying beside each other. And you'll notice the spaces, and we will fix that in a minute. But let's just talk about display inline block. So display inline block is a useful property that you can use to make things display beside each other or inline. So it's, a, it's kind of a combination of both the display types of inline, which is usually what anchor tags and other tags that are designed to fit within text are. So they, they'll just slide right in there. And then blocks. So divs are normally displayed as block, and you can see that it created a new line. The problem with inline elements is, yes, if you set the thing to be inline, it'll do this too. But the thing you'll run into is that when you try and manipulate the margin or the padding on the elements, you'll run into the fact that inline elements don't um, respect those properties in the way that block elements do. So if you make it inline block, you can get everything displaying next to each other very nicely, and you can still use margin and padding and all those other elements or properties that you're used to with blocks and they'll function normally, they'll function properly, and you won't have any headaches using those with inline block things. Okay, now that that's out of the way, um, first thing I want to do is I actually just want to give my container a width of 80%, and this just makes sure that everything's kind of not shoved up right against the margin, and I'll just go ahead and give it a margin of zero auto. So our container's just going to take up 
uh, sort of the middle of the page. You can see there these aren't quite centered yet and we'll fix that in a moment. But the first thing that you'll notice about our little grid is that there's a bunch of spaces even though we didn't set any margin on our grid items. When they were stacked up and down there wasn't any space and now there's space. So inline block isn't really a perfect solution. I like it because it has good browser support and you do often want to use some hacks with it but they're hacks that in my opinion make sense to me and I can wrap my head around so that's why I don't really mind them so the reason that we have little spaces here is that we have a font size and I think it has something to do with uh, the spacing of the lines or the font or whatever Bottom line is, if you set a font size 0 on the containing element, in this case our container, those all go away and our blocks have no space. And obviously this doesn't really look that good, I mean there might be times when you want this look, uh, but this way we can set a margin and we can be confident that our margin will be exactly what we set it to and nothing more, there won't be any weird spaces going on. And if you're doing nav links or something and you wanted the backgrounds of the nav links all to mesh up when you hovered, you don't want any any space there. So we set we set font size to zero and then in grid item we can set another margin. I'll just set that to 10 pixels. And we can be confident that that is exactly 10 pixels. I might actually adjust it to five or four apparently because it looks better. There we go. So now we can be confident in the size of our margin that it is exactly what we set it to. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. So that is that hack. And if you wanted to put text in these, it's not going to show up because your font size is zero. So if you just want to reset that, always good practice to reset that after using that hack. Just say font size one REM and that resets it. Obviously, we don't have any text, so we won't notice that. But it's just good practice to put it there in case someone's editing the code later, putting some text inside of these, and it's not showing up for them. This will prevent that from happening. Okay. So we have our grid items now. Now what do we want to do? So you'll notice that they're not quite centered. Um, this is okay, but some people might not quite like this. Some people might want their grid items to be centered. Wouldn't it be nice if this overflowed to the center? So interestingly enough, because it's inline, and remember inline usually is dealing with text, inline block elements will respect a text align property. So if you say text align center, you can actually move your inline block elements around which is kind of funky but again I said at the start these hacks they make sense in my head so if they make sense in yours that's great too so now we can see that everything's always uh, in the center it's pretty great um, so that's basically that I mean at this point we have a pretty good grid it's pretty responsive it looks it looks pretty good but there is one more thing I want to show you guys with inline block so if I go ahead and I say make one of these, a couple of these grid item large, so we're going to make a couple grid item large, and then we go ahead and we're going to apply this to dot grid item large still, but then also in grid item large we are going to set the height to be 300 pixels. You'll notice something weird happens. Where you may have expected that the things would align towards the top, these large ones, they push everything else to the bottom. And the way to fix that is just by saying vertical align. You can do middle. Middle is sometimes nice. So everything will be justified to the middle. That kind of looks OK. But a lot of people also just want to say top. And now those are done to the top like you expect. It looks kind of weird because we have multiple rows here. But if you had them all in one row, it would make a bit more sense. Okay. So there you, go. there you have it, guys. I mean, that's basically all there is to know about making a grid with inline block. If you can make a grid with inline block, you can pretty much use it to do anything else. This is a great technique to make nav links display properly. It's a great technique to make basically entire layouts of websites uh, if you want to take it that far. It has good browser compatibility so if we ask if we can use inline block 
you can see that we have a ton of green support for inline block here 98 percent global support so you're pretty safe using this compared with other methods like flexbox personally i think it's a lot cleaner than using floats there are a couple associated hacks the font size hack uh, the vertical align necessity which isn't really a hack at all but it is something that you need to keep in mind the text align hack which again isn't really necessarily a hack but just something you can keep in mind for aligning the inline block elements so that's that guys I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and I hope that you will subscribe I have more great content coming soon again my name is Ryan from syntax bite please subscribe to the channel please check out my Twitter have a good day guys peace out